I'm going to start by uh, a quick uh, promo for the Connecticut Sentinel, Connecticut's one and only conservative newspaper masterminded by Sally Fink. So this is the May 18th issue. Uh, others are coming out soon. And uh, I encourage you to go to ctsentinel.com, I believe is ctsentinel.com. So we'll talk about this a little bit. Okay, meantime, let me just read the uh, key part here concerning this uh, increase of 1,700%. Now, we've seen report after report where myocarditis appears to be killing a lot of young male athletes. And the common feature is that they've all been vaccinated and more than once. Now, uh, an investigation of official statistics has found the number of athletes that have died since the beginning of 2021 has risen exponentially compared with the total death rate between 1966 and 2004. Just unbelievable. So much so, the monthly average of deaths between January 21st and April 2022 has risen 1,700%. So this is, how you can ignore this is beyond amazing. But this is exactly what's happening, ladies and gentlemen. We're here doing what we can to report this, and there are a few other channels that are doing it as well. One person who steps into this every so often is Jesse Kelly on the 7, 10 a.m. It's, there has to be a reckoning somewhere. In any event, the link is up, you've got to read it. Now, the one I failed to put up there, um, there's another study, it's called a prospective study, so it's not considered authoritative, it's not considered the final word, it's not even considered something that uh, really sets the stage, but it invites researchers to take a closer look. The study finds that um, the uh, masks that people wore may have increased the death rate from COVID, okay, may have increased it. Now, the basis for this is something called the Fogan effect. The idea is that when you're wearing the mask and droplets are being caught in the mask, uh, what you get are larger droplets. The viruses get caught in the droplets. Eventually, the droplets break free from the mask and go into your respiratory tract. The argument is because of the greater mass of these droplets, they will penetrate deeper into your respiratory tract therefore triggering um, COVID, which could be far more severe. So that's, that's the argument. Uh, it's astonishing that not more work has been done on this, but I'm just going to bring him up, okay? He's still around. He is the phantom. He is the devil. He is the menace that still looms over us. His name is Dr. Anthony Fauci, all right? And he has uh, really not left it alone, all right, as far as all of this is concerned. He continues to interfere in various ways. He controls over $4 billion in research funding. He is the mafia king of research funding. If anybody comes up with an idea that would, for example, reveal that these masks can kill, he would squash that, that project. He would make sure that that research and that researcher never saw the light of day. Okay? So we shouldn't sit here and be surprised or confused about something like this. But it's here, the Fogan effect. And I just want to say, as from a biological point of view, um, the Fogan effect is an interesting argument, but in another respect, it seems to be counterintuitive because uh, when you, for example, are purifying proteins, the heavier proteins, the bigger proteins, tend to hang behind while the lighter proteins race ahead. So you'd think in a similar manner, smaller droplets would penetrate deeper into the respiratory tract than the, uh, than the heavier ones. But this, is, this has to be worked out. They have to do more tests, et cetera, et cetera. All right. I love this one. You know, I'm just going to make the point here, uh, unrelated but related. Uh, a gentleman named Ben Burkwam, who has been down in Texas, he's been in Uvalde, all right, but he's been following the border situation through uh, the Steve Bannon war room, okay? And that he made the point that with everything that happened in Uvalde, what you had, okay, was these bleeding heart liberals showing up, 
being so compassionate, sounding like they cared, and then whoops, they're gone. They're gone. They're not there to help these people get through what they're going through. Instead, it's left up to the, uh, the rest of us. Okay, so in that happy spirit, we have this 21 black White House staffers flee the White House. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, there's a connection here. As I note here, black voters flee Biden. Black staffers flee the White House. You think there's a connection there? You think there's a connection there with how they act in Uvalde? You bet there is. So, the key uh, phrase in here that explains this, let me just quickly read it to you. Um, many black staffers have decided to leave their jobs because mentorship is hard to come by. An opportunity to move up in the ranks in a tight-knit operation is exceptionally rare. I think that tells you all you need to know. This is just another form of racism, okay? They talk all the crap they want about bringing people on, and they don't do a, don't do a damn thing to help them learn their job and become competitive. It's, it's you-can-fill-in-the-blank kind of show. So what a surprise when they find that they're getting nowhere and they leave, okay? Anyway, this is posted too. All right, Senator Chris Murphy. First, you had Senator McConnell, we talked about him last week, sending Senator Cornyn to, to meet, to powwow with Senator Chris Murphy over this proposed, proposed bipartisan gun legislation. What a crock. So what I find fascinating here is that, all right, let's just, First of all, the title, Murphy Rules Out Assault Weapons Ban, New Background Checks in Senate Plan. All right. We're going to repeat the same point we've made before about you, Senator Murphy, and your ilk. There are so damn many laws in the books that you don't enforce. The law for dealing with people with psychiatric problems dates back to 1968. And now you're talking about coming up with new legislation, and it's been there all the time. I think... This tells us pretty much all we need to know. All right, so he says they're not going to ban assault weapons. We're not going to pass comprehensive background checks, but we want to make progress. And he thinks they're making progress. It'll be interesting to see what that progress is. So ladies and gentlemen, our job, your job, is to stay on top of this and not let them get away with this crap because they're going to keep changing their tune. They're going to keep changing what they really mean, what they don't mean. They're going to change their definitions like they always do. And they come up with their squish words. We're not buying it, okay? None of this, none of your proposals are going to, in any way, prevent the next death, the next mass shooting. Nothing. There's nothing in here where you've addressed it in any serious way. So moving right along, okay? There's a connection. In Killing League, Tensions high over school mental health facilities. All right. There are a lot of different arguments to be made about this. So Killingly, by the way, is a town on the far east side of Connecticut. They, Killingly is one of the few towns where I would trust the Board of Education there. But you have the liberal dipwads. Just they won't quit. They're on it. And they're saying, yes, the school needs a, a, a mental health facility center in it. Well, no, it does not. I and mean, as you know, this is a trend that's been going on in school districts all around the state and all around the nation. But thank God and killingly they're fighting it. So you get to read about that. Okay, yes. Bilderberg Group meets in secret to discuss disinformation. Yeah. Um, wouldn't you love to know what that is? See, how do I want to touch this? Um, we have some books that we've been looking at on psyops, and disinformation is a psyop technique. However, the particular tactics that you can develop in terms of how you manipulate language and narrative is uh, endlessly creative. Okay, and um, I guess the question they're asking themselves now is how sophisticated can they get? People have seen through the the veil in the first level, so now they've got to come up with something else. And I think that's why they're having this meeting. That said, in all fairness, when you read this article, um, they are uh, covering a host of other topics, just to rattle them off. Geopolitical realignment, NATO challenge, China, Indo-Pacific realignment, Saudi U.S. tech competition. Russia, I'm sure they're so upset that the ruble's doing so well. 
energy security and sustainability, post-pandemic health, Ukraine. Okay, you get the idea. So in other words, they try to put their resources together in order to figure out what they're going to do next to screw us over the next year. So, um, yes, this is interesting. It's a small village in North England near Yorkshire, population 500. The British government has decided to um, send 1,500 Muslim refugees to this small town, okay? How come you're sending three times as many people as there are in the village to the village? You're going to destroy that place. You're creating a hellhole. The British government, I don't understand how you people could be, quite frankly, so stupid, unless you're doing this intentionally. In which case, what should these people do? You think they're just going to accept this? I wouldn't. And, you know, the best part, they talk about how, you know, they're good culture, they're benign. Well, guess what? Their young men are already hitting up the girls in that town. How do you think that's going to end? Anyway, next. Artist creates virtual traffic jam on Google Maps with 99 cell phones in a wagon. So, I don't know, I'm going to hold this up real close here, see if we can get a good tight shot on it. That is a child's play wagon, ladies and gentlemen. And in that play wagon are 99 cell phones. And they're all emitting signals. So, guess what happens? He was dragging this. See, what town in Germany was this? Uh, let's see if we can find this. Um, yeah, it doesn't say here. Uh, uh, West Wecker. And then he's, um, okay, it was in central Berlin. Central Berlin. And, uh, yeah, so what happened was on Google Maps, it looked like there was this, uh, you might call it a virtual traffic jam on Google Maps because of all those phones. And they're all just sitting in a little wagon. I think that's very interesting. All right, moving on to number nine. Okay, that's right, 2,000 mules kicking the Democrats in the head. Um, you would be surprised to learn how many Democrats have been um, profoundly influenced by the 2,000 Mules documentary. Not to mention all the others, okay, who have been spreading the word about this. We have a survey of Democrats. Um, 68% of the Democrats effectively believe what was, report, what was in that video, okay? What does that say for the party? You have people waking up and realizing that their own party had committed fraud on them. They're not going to, you know, this raises the walkaway movement, something else we get to talk about later. And, and on a related note, Democrat election winner drops to third place after hand count in Georgia. Voting machines were off by thousands. Okay, so everything that we've been bitching, moaning, and complaining about has come home to roost here in DeKalb County uh, by virtue of the fact that when they had to recount these votes by hand, oops, made a few mistakes with the machines. Oops, what a shame. So, to which I say, if you allow this to go unprosecuted, dear state of Georgia, Kemp, and you, you scum, slime, Raffenber Raffenberger, okay, this is going to cause more problems than you can even begin to consider. So this has to be prosecuted. Just saying. All right, and Connecticut Commie of the Week, Laura Kennington. All right, can't say we know much about her, but she's basically just another of these so-called labor activists. This is a question that really needs to be answered here. A surprising number of these people, when I do uh, a little research on them, they're all labor activists. They're members of the Communist Party, but the big deal is that they consider themselves labor activists. How about we're not buying it, okay? And um, how about if we get to the bottom of this? All I can do is say I'll try. So there's that. Now, I just got a few calls to action here I got to talk about quickly. Again, where'd the paper go? Has anybody got a page? Yes. No, no, no. Under here? Where is it? The newspaper. Yes. Okay. Once again, remember, get your copy. You can get it online or we can get you the hard copy. 
and we highly recommend that you subscribe to the Connecticut Sentinel. An up-and-coming paper, Hartford Current, look out. And we won't have fake circulation figures either. So there's that. Yes, I'll, and that. Okay, so the, thanks. So the other thing on um, Wilms, all right. So Wilm Donoth is running in the 148th district again. Uh, uh, truth in advertising, I'm going to be his campaign manager. His treasurer happens to be present, Karen. And there'll be other, a few other people helping him out. Um, the, I just want to quickly rattle off the four, his four main points. These four, the second and first amendments that he uh, he's for parental rights, stridently so. He's against vaccine mandates. And uh, he expects that doctors should be allowed to uh, do their job without interference from bureaucracy, the government, corporations, insurance companies. The doctor-patient relationship is sacrosanct, and it should remain so. So those are some of his main points there. The other big thing, I wish I had the link. Okay, last week we talked about, let's see, we talked about the $150,000 position for the election misinformation officer for the state of Connecticut, better known as the Ministry of Truth officer. That'll fit in very nicely with our session with Mary Ann in Chapter 6. Yes. It has something to be do, being done being screwed by Big Brother, but that's another discussion. Okay, they have put up a petition drive against this, this person. They already have 3,000 signatures. So ctramram.org, I think it's slash petition. If you go to the website, uh, you will find the petition there. Absolutely sign it. Uh, they need to hear from us and know that this is the stupidest thing they've ever concocted, and we're not going to put up with it. So on that happy note, good night.